Yo guys, it's up Shadow here and welcome to another Monster Train run today again on Covenant 1. We're doing um, Hellhorned and Awoken and as you just saw there we are probably gonna go on a armor run this time because we start out with the battering ram already. That's a good thing to start out and the game also gives us this artifact that gives us five armor for all our creatures as a base. So, you know, that's a that's a good start. I feel kind of confident that this might be a good armor run. I never actually had one that worked so far, but, you know, we'll see. So, at the beginning, of course, armor might be a bit underwhelming. Um, because if you cannot amass it too much, I mean, it's already 44 damage. Because it's four times the armor on the floor dealt as damage to the front monster. Which is a lot. But um, still, sometimes if you don't get your armor on and you get beat down a lot and monster escape to the next floor, it can feel a bit weak. But here, as you can see, we already deal quite good damage. So we just need to get a few interesting um, creatures here and we're ready to go. So there we go, the March of the Shields for a bit more armor and Restoration Detonation is a great card as well if you need to heal your guy. Your champion, that's pretty decent. Um, I decided to go for the spell upgrade here. So plus 20 power and consume. I basically wanted to be able to get rid of a few of these fireball spells during every um, game uh, that I play. And also the March of the Shields, just making it free, you know, just makes it a little bit more comfortable to use. All right, here we're already on battle two. Now this is an... I, I always hate this kind of battle because these raged up dudes really deal a lot of damage. So you have to be um, able to survive these or summon your champion on another level. Because most of the time they uh, will wreck your champion on the first round if you cannot defend them properly. And also with the hasters it kind of means that they're going to top immediately. So really annoying. And here I barely can summon enough stuff to make this work which is nice. Unfortunately, I will not get the, uh, the little gold guy again, but hey, what can you do? There we have March of the Shields. We can just snipe a few of these guys. And, you know, with the cards from the Awoken Secondary there, I can just pump up my, uh, my champion a bit and make sure I draw a lot of cards in the next turn, which will be important later on to uh, consistently draw into the Battering Ram even if we have a lot of cards in our decks. So, yeah. And then we still have the Rage as well, which is not really the mechanic I was going for. And I think later on I will actually purge the Rage uh, cards from the deck because they don't really do that much for me. But yeah, there you go. 144 damage with that Battering Ram already. So that's kind of the direction the deck is going to go and just try to stack the armor. And here, that's nice. The 45, that's always a nice card to have. And the Steel Enhancer is nice. The Sting is probably a bit nicer for me because I need to be able to deal with a lot of things early. And again, it's more card draw. So we're going for the next spell upgrade. This time we're just putting some power onto um, the Sting spell there. So we have 20 damage that we can throw around, which is nice. And then I decided to reduce the cost of the Battering Ram a bit, because right now, 3 mana, that's pretty much a commitment, you know, that you go in. And here in the Frozen Cavern, we have this, uh, the Nexus Spike uh, things and the Unhinged Power again. And this time I kind of decide to you know, not te uh, not not playing with that because it's it, it's a bit wonky. This kind of stuff. I really don't like these um, one-time use things with perch and stuff like that. I really don't like them unless it's a spell that you definitely want to get rid of anyway. Then it's a kind of nice way to do it. But you know, and Talos. Talos is for me one of the bosses that I hate the most. She's really annoying. And we got these Rage Dudes again on the first floor, so we cannot summon the Hornbreaker Prince into them directly. That is not a smart move. So I'm kind of thinking, how do we how do we even go about this here? And 
here we go we summon him on floor two and then we just have to hope for a good draw in the second round here at least they're a little bit weaker on uh, the second floor but they, yeah they're annoying now the sting spell it's a the 20 damage sting it's a bit overkill there but you know just trying to get rid of some of these and then making our uh, champion a bit stronger just preparing him for to fight the boss essentially now the problem of course with the armor deck at least this one here is that if your champion the guy with a lot of armor gets killed you're done because there's no way you can restack that armor onto another target that quickly so it's you really have to go all in on the armor you have to be able to kill the enemy champion or the the boss when it gets to the the level of where your champion is if you cannot do that you're screwed and i do have a bit a bunch of problems during the run i think you will see it later a little bit um i at one point i thought the run would fail but you will see what i mean so here i'm already having a little bit of problems since the consistent damage output is not too good especially these higher level dudes i'm having trouble with at least i can snipe the uh, the hasters otherwise it would be pretty uh, ugly and these little guys i can take care of with the sting spells which is cool but again it is just we're just not getting that power output yet that we need the consistent one at least now here comes the final wave and this is unfortunate we already get the battering ram into our hand here which is pretty much a guarantee that we won't be drawing it next turn so i'm spending all of these cards that let me draw more cards next turn to hopefully draw it again but unfortunately not really getting it but luckily this is early enough so our champion is still quite enough to actually kill the boss here with the sheer power of his ability of the slay and revenge ability here with the rage so good enough here now these three cards do nothing for me unfortunately now this on the other hand is exactly the guy i've been looking for the steel worker is exactly the guy we need it powers up our champion through the turns and makes then in the end the uh battering rank even more vicious and you saw i also get the card draw relic which is the one that i need the most i think um then we get rid of a few cards these train stewards do absolutely nothing for us you know in some decks it's kind of nice to have these throwaway creatures but not in this deck and there's a wilting sapwood which i like but since we cannot uh, get this on our champion it doesn't really matter and we want our champion to be the one in the front line I duplicate the battering ram because we need more of it obviously and now here i could have gone on the slay route here but i think doubling down onto the armor gain is the way to go fully committing on the armor build so yeah let's let's just see how this goes now this is a good start we get of course the hornbreaker prince um with the armor with the steel worker but as you can see i cannot kill the haster back there so i have to set them up on the top at least i can already get um a little bit of armor which is nice already on to uh 20 armor up there in total so a battering ram deals a lot of damage i'm gonna use it here to get rid of the front guy so we can kill both of these easily very nice so, you know, crisis averted for now. And then kill the next haster. Easy peasy. So every time, um, every turn I get five armor. And every time I slay something I get armor. It's a pretty good, uh, really good uh, setup right now. And then of course with other cards like March of the Shields and the... Uh, this other card, uh, the armor up. I'm just getting a bunch of armor stacks onto my dude. This should be fine for the boss. But again, I, it, I think the armor build is a bit weaker against normal monsters that just pass you by. 
with with bosses that keep chewing on the armor until they die it's kind of good but again on, on some of these weaker monsters with a lot of health they just you know they just walk by and now i do have the rage here that kind of saves me a little bit of fire health here which is nice But yeah, also this guy is gonna um, be a bit annoying because every time he kills something he adds uh, the cards to my deck though that I don't want, the blight cards. At least for this round, but fortunately he only slay one of my guys on the next level. So, more armor. Right now we're on over 100 armor. That's about 400 damage of a battering rank. I have one on my hand here. I can use it here because my uh, all my creatures have armor per default, but because of our relic. But it's not much, of course. Now, here we go. There's the battering ram. That's 556 damage. Pretty solid. As you can see, it works. The question is, this, can we stretch this into the late game to make it work? And there is a Bramble Lash, which is also cool, but we do not have a good spike source, unfortunately. A good repeatable spike source. So no Bramble Lash. It would be kind of a cool combination to have, but there you go. So we're going over to the um, spell upgrade again. And here I'm going to go for uh, more power. Again, on the Sting spell, so we have this really high, like, uh, 30 damage Sting. And then one of the Battering Rams now onto um, one mana. And I, the other I enchant with Holdovers, so that we have a chance of always having something on our hand like that. And now here comes the Stealthfer. The Stealthfer is annoying. I really do hate the Stealther. The Stealther is, I think, a good test against most builds to see if you can survive it. Now here I'm kind of contemplating if I should have put it on the first floor, but I then decide that it will be enough. It will be okay. Um, since I do have March of Shields and a Battering Ram to go on. And you can see, they deal some damage, get some shield off, but I do get more than enough back every time I slay something. So that should be relatively easy here. Free Sting to kill this guy. And here we have our Battering Ram again. So as long as we keep using it, we'll have it on our hand. So that's what we keep doing here. Just smacking it into the enemies. And of course, it also kind of stacks Rage, this deck, as well. But more passively through um, his ability and not through any cards of ours. Battering Ram again, and there's also the cheaper Battering Ram that we can use here. But you can see there's a guy with 95 health left that makes up uh, his way up the ramp there. And there's just not much we can do about this guy. He's away from all of our major armor uh, dudes. So it's kind of hard to actually get rid of. It's really annoying, but that's how it is. So we just have to leave him through. That is going to be a bit painful. But that's what I mean. There's just a lot of these high level guys on one floor. There's not much we can deal about it. Uh, uh, you know, do about it. Now, shortly before we have the boss. Of course, start uh, spamming some spells. Getting the battering ram so I can draw it again. There we go. Here's the Stealther, and uh, yeah, see? That is annoying. We won't deal too much damage to the Stealther. So here comes the Battering Ram 1, and here number 2. That's already put him low, but he will kill our champion. That's annoying. He will not be um, left with a lot of health here, but enough. There you go, 82. Now, fortunately, we do get the 30 damage Sting spell and the 22 damage Consume um, Fireball. And then there is again the Sting. Get him right before he gets to our Pyre. Now, here we have a few interesting cards. There's the Branding Rite, which is, I think, the first time that I actually consider taking it. And 
even taking it, you know, because it kind of works well with the um, um, the exploding healing spell. Because right now it's kind of useless because we rigid, we get so much armor, we don't lose any health. And with that, we can kind of abuse that card a bit more. Now there's Cleansing Water, which is a 50-50% chance for uh, debuffing the enemy. But I go with the Pyre. And then here I'm copying the Battering Ram, the one mana Battering Ram. That is, again, just to be able to get as many of them into my deck. Because I definitely need that damage output. Now here comes... Yeah, this is gonna be annoying. Statues and... Yes, Blight Cards. And I'm setting up the guy up top because we need to get rid of the statues first. And with an armor deck, it's gonna be annoying. If we don't, like, have a battering ram on the starting hand. And I'm gonna get flooded here with a lot of these purge cards. You will see it in a second here. And it... I, at this point here, I thought this is it. That's that's the run. That's the run over with. And yeah, you'll see. But bam, there we go. We just have, um, I think, three or four, four of these cards in our hands. And the only thing I can do is basically play these the free spells or then accept that we get damaged here. So we're getting rid uh, um, as of as many as we can. But damn, it's just not gonna let up. This is really showcasing one of the bigger problems of this deck. If on the floors that you're not set up, you cannot do anything with this deck. It's really the biggest flaw of it. And if you're not set up on floor one, which I might have, might have slash should have done, then exactly this is gonna happen. This is a really ugly combination and I can be really happy that I managed to survive it. But yeah, there you go. Now here, I decide to spend a little bit more mana to get rid of at least one of these guys. But yeah, the Pyre health is really suffering now. More weight of consciousness. It's At least now there's not as many of them on the board. But still, there's just so many. So, so many. We get rid of one of them, but then again, we are not able to deal enough damage to even kill these 95 health guys. So they're gonna really keep the pressure on here on our Pyre. It's down to half health already, two rounds remaining. And it's not gonna get better from here, isn't it? So yeah, just cleaning up some of these guys. And, you know, basically I just accepted the fate that they're gonna come go through here. So now there's only one of these guys with the, um, these cards that is still producing them. So I'm kind of hoping that I will be able to uh, at least do something afterwards. But yeah, I will have to kill Fel as soon as he comes to the top floor. I have to be prepared with enough armor. And it's kind of difficult to do that if you have to freaking spend all of your mana on perching a blight card. But at least this is basically the last blight card that we get added here to the deck. It leaves us basically with round one round of full mana next turn. And here I get none no of the armor cards, but it also means I have a good chance of drawing um, like one or two battering rams next turn, which is nice. And there we go. There's one battering ram, though. Just one. But it's quite a lot of damage. And it is enough to make Fel disappear together with our champion's damage. Which is already on 100 and something. 151 in the end there. So he also deals quite a lot of damage if he gets enraged. Now here I get the rail spike just to be able to dig for certain cards. Especially some of these armor cards. And now I do want to get a bit more artifacts and to perch a few cards. And here is basically all of our train stewards gone. I was thinking about perching the rage guys, but the train stewards are more annoying. So here we get armor, but only for our pyre, which is unfortunate. 
And here we get the lightstone casing, which is exactly what we need here. A good card so we can upgrade technically our uh, battering rams once more. And here we go to the third upgrade. And I was kind of considering maybe getting an, another artifact, but you know, it's just... It was already feeling okay-ish, so I decided not to go for it. But yeah, this is also going to be annoying here with these Ember Drain guys, which make uh, me lose mana on the next turns. But I should be able, with fortifying the Battering Ram, to hopefully take him out here on uh, basically turn one or turn two. So I just kind of hoping to draw a Battering Ram here on the next turn so I can just smack him. And I do get one, on, uh, for, uh, fortunately enough, which is quite a lot of damage. But we can, of course, increase that even more with various spells here. And as you can see, now 220 damage already on that floor. Pretty decent. So we should be able, if we draw um, battering rams consistently now, we should be able to clean them every time. So here's the holdover battering ram, so with this we guarantee to at least have one of them every turn. Now of course we can just throw around some stings and make ourselves a bit stronger and heal. Now. Only one battering ram, which means we can get rid of the first guy. The second guy is going to be a bit annoying, so I'm trying to dig for another one here. And I get it. Excellent, 300 damage and keeping strong. So right now, this is a very good setup. We are now at a point where we can reliably start killing these guys without any trouble. Just like that. Here we get both battering rams, so excellent. Just smacking them in the face. Now this is ex exactly where the armor deck is really going off. Final wave. This guy shouldn't be too much trouble. Increasing and increasing the armor more and more. And just a little bit of damage, you know, just to be nice. Now we already deal 470 damage just like that so we just have to deal a little bit more damage with our battering ram here boom 620 that's amazing i could have used uh branding right before that even that would have been uh, about 80 damage more but you know it was enough anyway so not really a problem and smack now the question i was um uh, asking myself here is am I able to really go through about 2,500 health of the final boss with uh, with freaking uh, battering rams? Am I able to be to do that? And you know, it, it is kind of risky, honestly. I wasn't sure I was be able to do it, but you know, here I am getting rid of these rage cards because I don't ever play them anyways, and they're just clogging up the deck. So why not get rid of it? Now here we have, well, you know, a few interesting artifacts, but I decided to go further and see if we can get something better. And the Cheater's Hand definitely is a good artifact to have at all times. And then I just, you know, just for the sake of it, upgrading our Steel Worker, just make him a bit more durable and a bit more damage on him. Why not? Here we go. Final battle against Seraph the Temperate, so he's gonna sap our guys, which is not really a problem because our damage is not coming primarily from uh, the freaking uh, damage that we do with the creatures, but the armor, of course. And here, I definitely want to set him up at the top because I want to let him grow as big as possible. So that's the goal here. I'm just throwing up some fireballs. Just trying to soften these guys up before they come up. And there we go. Cheater's Hand is such a good 
freaking card because now I can really start to, you know, make uh, very informed decisions on what I need to draw this turn, what do I need to draw next turn. It's it's really a great card. I love it. So here, I can deal some damage to Seraph the Temperate, which is nice. So I use Branding Ride to increase my armor to max. And then just toss out 440 damage. That's already a big chunk of health off of Seraph. Good start. Now we just need to keep these guys off of our pyre here. And uh, with more battering rams, this is going to be quite easy. Should have played the March of the Shields first, honestly, but you know. Sometimes you just forget things like that. And I do not really want to play the second battering ram, it's not needed here. Rather just increase the strength of my champion a bit, I think that makes a bit more sense. Especially because if I slay somebody, um, I do get a little bit more armor. So if I can slay things, it is better to leave it that way, unless I can deal damage to Seraph directly. Then I think that definitely takes priority. It's not too much right now because of the sap, but you know. Whoa, but now we have a big stack on top and now we need to really chew through these guys. Fortunately enough, we still have this holdover battering ram coming in. With the sting spells. It's just a very nice combination of damage spells that complements our armor stacking. You know? So if we calculate, right now we have about 120 armor, which is about 480 in damage. So that's pretty neat. One battering ram, two battering ram, sting. And... Then with the explosion just killing the last guy. Getting more damage onto Seraph. Not much. Not, not a nice double battering ram, but you know, at least something. But yeah, we get these four stacks up top all the time now. It's really annoying. But then again, with two battering rams per turn, you can just almost destroy everything. Now one of these guys, unfortunately, will go through. Not a big deal, but, you know. And here is Mr. Seraph himself. I'm always keeping away that rail spike, because that's only for desperate situations, pretty much. But yeah. So here I'm trying to prematurely kill one of the bottom guys maybe on the next turn with a fireball so, so we have a little bit less defense in front of Seraph on the last round there we go battering ram and now here I do want to try and dig for another battering ram unfortunately not not getting it and uh just have to deal with what I've been de dealt here. It's kind of annoying. And these guys will go through to the fire, so a bit more damage on it, unfortunately. Down to a 52, so it's getting critical. I, if Seraph goes through completely, then uh, in any form, then yeah, I'm, I'm screwed. But I have three battering rams on my hand here. I just need to basically get through these guys. One battering ram used for that. And now I have two battering rams here. 660. Another 660. And that is enough to actually deal the killing blow. That, you know, just the armor of revenge, rage and uh, armor here helped us to just kill him off in the end. Very nice. So that was the armor run. Very cool. Never had a successful armor run before, so that's nice. Experienced that as well. And I have to say, I um, <laughs> I tried then to do a, a few Covenant 2 runs just to see how it worked, the, the Covenant 2, before I do videos on it. And I actually, on the second Covenant 2 run, I managed to beat it. Um, I will show you a little deck summary of what I actually worked with. It was pretty cool. It was basically... 
um, a Awoken Stitchin Guard deck with the um, the Wild End guy. And it was... Um, I don't want to say it was a Sting deck because I didn't have the artifact that makes Stings more powerful. But it was a spell-based Encant deck. So this guy has Encant plus 3 damage, Encant armor. And this guy is pretty cool. Um, he gives Revenge, Frostbite 3 and Encant armor 3. So whenever I play spells, he just gets uh, my champion gets bigger and um, my frontline gets beefier, and so I just just toss out spells and make them big, and then hopefully against the boss they would, you know, just um, be able to soak up so much damage and deal a lot of damage in return to um, to kill him plus the frostbite stacks from the front line that gets put on everybody from revenge all the time that worked out quite nicely even though the basically two of the bosses were completely anti-spell but i would still manage to get through it was a pretty fun run but i'm sure i'm gonna film a covenant tour run in the future so guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time take care